Yo, 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 Muddy Waters Podcast. This your boy Shaq Sims, and I'm here right now with a special guest, man. <laughs> Dog, listen, I always say people are special. This guy right here is very special, man. You know what I'm saying? And if you grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, <laughs> you know, if you've uh, went to any high school in the area, you know, if you've been to jail, <laughs> 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 wearing a gang, or oh, anything yeah. of that sort, you know, in this area, man. You know this guy right here, man. Um, but all around, good guy, though. You know, he, he wasn't just a cop because you know how I feel about most cops. But this was guy was just an authentic, genuine guy, man. You know, when he was out there on the streets, you know, um, as as a police officer. I tried. I man tried. of respect. Oh yeah, that's how I came up. Yeah, you know. And um, it was a cop that actually saved me. I got arrested when I was 18. We were always know. We got to introduce your name first. Uh, Officer Walls, man. You know what I'm saying? Officer Walls, Deputy Walls, Deputy Sergeant Walls. Walls, whatever you want to call him. Now Dr. Mr. Walls, because I'm, I'm retired now. Dr. So. Walls. Not Dr. Walls. Not I Dr. just Dr. got a master's degree. I ain't got a Not doctor yet. yet. No, just, just a master's All degree. All right. You know. Mr. Walls. Mr. Walls is good. Mr. That's Walls. Good. <laughs> Let's take the people back. Like, because you were about to get into the story, though. Like, what? Because you... For y'all that aren't familiar, um, which a lot of y'all are, uh, I interviewed a guy named Mike. So Mike, you know, he went to the feds for drugs and stuff like that. He's from New York, and he got locked up in D.C. and all of that stuff. Um, he was on my podcast maybe back in, like, March or April or something like that. He had a great story. Him and him and Mike, Walls and Mike, were best friends growing up. Oh, yeah, they're right across the street from me. It's crazy how y'all lives, you know, y'all were best friends, but y'all lives went in two totally different directions. Totally different. And uh, it's strange that we ended up meeting back up at this age and living near each other. But even when he was in the feds, you know, we were still in contact. Yeah. You know, I would write him from time to time, you know, send him some money. So we, we always stayed in contact. We we never lost contact. Yeah. But um, one thing i say about Mike, you know, even though Mike was doing things that might not have been... You know, technically the right thing. Yeah. He made sure to look out for me. He never took me around any of that. He always made sure that, you know, if he was going to do something that he thought he might get in trouble doing it, you know, he made sure I was uh wasn't around at all because he knew my family, I knew his family, and I think he um he knew my pops and uh, moms would have been disappointed, you know, had I got caught up in a situation like that. So, you know, he kind of uh, made sure that um I stayed clear of those types of things. Yeah. So, that was a good thing because. You know, you, when you're young, you're impressionable. If he would have went riding to do something, I'd have been right along. But he made sure he was like, nah, man, you know, this ain't for you. And uh, I didn't like it at the time, but now that I'm older, I understand why he did the things that he did. Some of the things he was doing was things he had to go do. Yeah. You know, I didn't have to live that lifestyle, but some of the things that he did, um, he did out of necessity. For me, it just would have been, you know, following, following behind him, going to do it because he was doing it. And like I said, a real friend wouldn't, wouldn't allow you to go do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a real friend, so, you know, he kind of kept me uh, away from those things because I, I wanted to be a part of that. Like, when you, I grew up, like, I ain't going to say sheltered, but, you know, my dad was in law enforcement, so a lot of things, a lot of people wouldn't uh, let me be around him doing certain things. And when you're not around that, you kind of want to gravitate towards that because it seems exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a lot of people out here that I've encountered here in Columbia you know, that um, went to prison because they thought they were trying to get into that exciting life. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it might have seemed exciting for a minute, but when the judge hit that gavel and throwing the football numbers out, you know, things just got real. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I thank the Lord that uh, I didn't have to hear no football numbers for things to get real for me. I caught a case uh, when I was 18. And uh, luckily my dad was in law enforcement, and he kind of saved me, but the officer who arrested me, you know, also saved me. He, um... He said, well, look, if you're willing to go into the military, you know, I can speak to the judge and, you know, try to get your charges worked out. And that made me want to go in the Army. I was like, man, I'm ready to go tomorrow. But I had to graduate high school first. So that happened in April, right after I turned 18. My birthday is in April. I had just turned 18. I caught that case. Uh, they put me on um, probation for six months. So come came um, September, you know, when my time was up, I was able to go into the military. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've been straight ever since. But... You know, what if that police officer wouldn't have looked out for me? What if he would have said, well, you know what? I'm going to give him everything he's supposed to get. And he would have sentenced me to some time. I wouldn't be sitting there talking to you right now because my life would have went in a totally different direction. So, yeah. you know, I thank the Lord for the way that it played out. What was the case, if you don't mind talking about? It, it started out simple. 
first of all, I found a credit card. I can remember the name on the credit card. The lady's name was Violet. When I found the credit card, I put it in my wallet. And I told my brother-in-law, I said, man, I'm going to try it. It was for a and It was a clothing store downtown. I said, I'm going to try to use a credit card and go buy some clothes. Mm -hmm. So he was like, um, nah, man, you shouldn't do it. You should throw it away. I forgot about it, and it was still in my wallet. So I snuck on the train in Brooklyn one day, and when a cop caught me, he, all he was going to do was write me a ticket. Yeah. But I saw he was a little overweight, and I was in great shape. So boom, I take off running. You know, while I'm running, I don't see the cop no more, but all of my classmates that was outside seen me. So I said, I'm going to have a hell of a story to tell them because they seen me, I run a cop. Well, you know, unbeknownst to me, the, uh, it was a good Samaritan to let the cop get in the car with him. So the whole time I'm walking, the cop is, is like riding side by side. But I don't notice him because I'm hyped about the story. I'm going to tell everybody when I get back. Man, he jumped out and pointed the gun at me. was like, get down. And uh, I got down immediately on the ground. He came and cuffed me, looked through my wallet, found a credit card. And um, so it went from just getting a ticket, you know, for basically trespassing on the train to resisting arrest, to uh, stolen credit card. And they was trying to charge, the lady said she had been robbed at gunpoint. So they was trying to charge me with armed robbery. So it went from a nice day at school to, man, it's looking like the bottom about to fall out. So, you know, like I said, my pops, you know, he came up there and, um, he got with the, the cop that arrested me. They got with the judge and everything. And, you know, uh, it, it ended up working out because the lady said no. When they showed her my mugshot, she said, no, nah, that's not the dude that robbed me. All she had to do was say, yeah, that's him. I remember him. He the one that had the gun. And I, like I said, I wouldn't be here today. It would have it would, it got real serious. But They wouldn't have let you go in the military for the robbery? No, 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 no. Uh -uh. No. But see, nowadays it ain't like that no more. Nowadays yeah, ain't, no ain't no jail no. or army. It's jail or jail. I mean, it's... It is what it is, but thank God, you know, like I said, this is 84, you know, so I let you know I'm, I'm kind of old to do. This was in 84, uh, and I went in the Army. I liked it. Stayed for 20 years. Yeah. But I wanted to give back. I wanted to be a cop so I could be that guy that could help somebody out because that cop, really, you could say he saved my life because my life wouldn't be the, the way it is right now if he didn't take an interest in me and, and felt, you know, felt like I was a good dude. You know, even though I took him on a long, a, a nice little run to catch me, you know, I was still kind of respectful when he came up and, uh, and caught up with me. So, you know, I want to uh, be a cop and give back. And there's a lot of people here in Columbia that can say it's days that they wouldn't have made it home if it wouldn't have been for me. That's a you fact. Know? I wouldn't have graduated high school if it weren't for you. And I, I remember the day that you talked no about, cap. too. No cap. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> no cap. Like, dog, you know, we're going to get back to your story. But so how this ended up happening you know for the people who don't know most of y'all don't know most people that's not something i really talk about but i went to a football game me and snoop no a basketball game it was me basketball and my game. best friend snoop um at the time we drunk we drunk johnny bootleggers we had like six of them before the game for y'all that don't know those those were the little mark liquors in the bottle mm. so we drunk those or whatever and we came to the game mind you you know i always been chill walls you uh -huh. know i always been you know under the radar or whatever, oh, yeah. whatever. He was a good dude. So when when we were at the game, Snoop was loud, all out and about. So he ended up getting caught. I didn't notice at the time. I'm chilling, doing my own thing, watching the game, sitting next to my homie. I think I was sitting next to Freddie P. Sitting next to him, talking or whatever. Just like this, watching the game and... You didn't come up to me. Somebody else came up to me. I think Fields came and got you. Fields was like, your name Shaquille. You with Dominique Wages? I'm like, yeah. He like, come with us. I'm like, oh, shit. So, you know, they come get me. I go. <laughs> so they like, yeah, you know. And Walls was there like, yeah, man, you know, uh, Dominique, he getting kicked out of school already. It's, it's, it's over with. The assistant principal here because we were at his school. Yeah. My school was Lifewood. So with that being said, the my resource officer wasn't there, my principal wasn't there, my none of nobody from my school was there. But it's so crazy. Walls knew my assist my, my, my resource officer. So him and Buddy was cool. So they were like, yeah, we're gonna come up to your school on Monday. We're gonna talk about what happened, whoop, and then we're gonna go from there. Long story short, nobody ever came to my school. I never heard of Pete. Nobody ever did anything. And this man is the reason why. Cause once I, I a few months later, um, when I graduated, I saw him and I was like, you know, because that was my first time seeing you since that situation happened. And I was like, yeah, man, y'all never came to my school. He was like, yeah, I know, cause of me. <laughs> <laughs> but you were always like a guardian angel, man, like uh -huh. over me, man, cause you know I was into some stuff. But you were always there to like, cause you was a good dude. I mean, you might have every. 
you know, I think it was good for me to get arrested before becoming a cop because I know what it's like for somebody to have to go through that process. It's not a good process. Do some people need to go through it? Yeah, I needed to go through it. So, but everybody doesn't need to go through that. Um, for one, you know, like I said, at the time that I grew up, you can get arrested and your life could still kind of go on. You know, it wasn't really going to maybe hurt you like it might hurt you today. Um, so with that being said, there's times that I've kept people from going because I was like, you know, he don't need to go through that. You know, I think just me talking to him would do it. And that was kind of like the, uh, with the concept that we came up for the uh, Scared Straight program. Mm. Uh, some people just needed to be scared straight as opposed to getting locked up and having that blemish on their record, making it hard for them to get a job and just overall suffering because of a mistake that they made when they were younger. Uh, I made a mistake when I was young and I was able to overcome it. And I, I, you know, I wanted other people to be in the same position, learn from their mistakes and keep it pushing, basically. Yeah. So that's why, um, like I said, for me, it was good to get arrested because I know what it's like. And I used to take kids on the tour down to the jail so they could see what it would be like prior to maybe needing to get there. Because just maybe seeing it might make you, if somebody would took me down there and I would have seen what I was going to go through, I said, okay, I'm not signing up for that. You know, but the era I grew up with, and we kind of idolized the guys that went to jail. You know, I thought somebody went to jail, it was tough. But when you look at it now, going to jail don't make you tough. Anybody can go to jail. If you if you 17 and above, it, you, you, and you do something wrong, they're going to get you down to the jailhouse in record time. I mean, it's real easy to go to jail. Uh, I respect somebody more for staying out of jail, but if you did go to jail, it don't make you necessarily a bad person, but that's something that a person need to learn from. If you mm -hmm. go to jail, learn from it, and uh, don't be a frequent flyer. Don't keep going back and forth down there, because if, yeah. if that's the case, then, yeah, then, then I got to say you're a fool if, yeah. if you keep going, you know. Definitely a fool. Like, you know, I, I always say anytime I have somebody on my show and we talk about like them catching cases and, sh and stuff like that, I always say it's two types of people that go to jail. You got the person that gets scared straight from that experience. Definitely. And then you got them that's me too. <laughs> and then you got the person that's like, this ain't that bad. Yeah. You're you know, right. you got the person that's like, uh, well, it ain't that bad. You know, I. I I'm back here with my homies. I may not be able to eat what I want to eat, but I can still get honey buns. You know what I'm saying? I may not be able to. Uh, <laughs> I may not be able to have sex with my girl when I want to, but I can write her and call her, and I won't be back here forever. You, you know. Got, then you got some people that's gonna go down there. They they gonna they gonna find alternative way. They might not be able to sleep with their girl, but they got some other things popping down there that they might decide to get off into. So yeah. you know they ain't gonna come back out here and say what they did. But yeah, you, you know there's some people that go down there and there's some things. <laughs> You know, they get into an alternative lifestyle. They're going to come back out and act like, you know, you know they, they, they on the street now. But meanwhile, while they was down, you had, you had a boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You down there, got somebody braiding your hair and all. You sitting in between the man's legs. You know what I'm saying? So, but you come back out and you're super tough now. You yeah, know, but, you got hey, fresh braids in your, in your, in yeah, your who, prison picture. Who, who, who braid? What, what real man you know getting? Nah, come on now. <laughs> no, that's you see some dudes. You see some fresh dudes, braids, I mean, fresh like, braids, and he ain't just get locked up. So it was like it wasn't fresh from the street. He was like he been down five years. Yeah, you like man, he came. He went to jail with a ball with a baldy. Yeah, you, and now you, you got braids. <laughs> you sit between the man legs, getting your hair done. So you know, <laughs> it is. But I've seen a lot of you know. One of the funny things is you know when you when you hear people talk about snitching. Yeah, and everybody, man, I ain't no snitch. I've seen so many people, you know, that uh, they, they was tough when they was on the street. Everybody yeah. was watching. Yeah. They cursing walls out, F you, boo, 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 and all that. Okay, not a problem. We get in the car. Hey, bro, you know, I know about a murder. Oh, okay, but but now you want some help. Now you want to tell me about a murder, but it was just F me a minute ago. Yeah. You know, but it's two types of people, those that snitch and those that wish they had snitched but after they get all that time. I mean, yeah. you, got, you got, there's awesome, thorough people. But I'm going to say in my time working here in, in Richardson County, I think I might have had maybe one or two people that didn't cooperate at all. That was like, you know, whatever I got to get, I got to get. Everybody else was like, man, I tell on my mother if that's what it takes to get out. But I'm not trying to go back there to jail. Yeah. You, know? and that's you can't lie with my case. I kept it thorough. Yeah, you can. At 16 now. Yeah. For the camp. Listen, I got to make this a, a a clip. You know what I'm saying? Just just for just for my page. You know, I, and I, I, and I didn't her. do it. Yeah, you're right. Kept it thorough. Now, now that was some idiotic stuff to do now. Yeah. But I kept it thorough. Just for you, you niggas. You did. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, do you think it's snitching with so let's just say me and you go out and I do something, but they catch you for it. Now, would it be snitching, you think, in the streets if you told them, so listen, man, I ain't do it. 
But you know, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, Walls did that. I wouldn't say nothing. Okay. I would just be like, I, I would just be like, I want my lawyer. Knowing what I know now about the law, uh -huh. that's what I would say. Now, b when I was ignorant, I would be like, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't. Nah, even, even back then, I would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Even back then. Because like when I, when I caught my case, I was 16. I didn't know nothing about Miranda rights. I didn't know about the fact that my parents had to be there. I just knew. Hey, parents don't got to be there, though. When you're 16? No, parents got to be there. Especially like, let's just say, one of the, if I come up to the school to talk to you, it's something called in loco parentis, which basically means the school is acting as your parents. So if I come up there and say, man, listen, I need to talk to Shaq about something. They say, all right. Now I need one of them to be in the room with me. What you think about it? Are they going to jump on your up? side? Yeah, are they going to jump up and say, hey, Shaq, you probably shouldn't answer that right there. Nah, they, they don't know. They probably going to sit up in there with me. They're going to let me ask my questions. And it's going to be legal because yeah. the school, they, basically your parent was there. Yeah. Because the school was there. Now a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I don't think, you know what? I don't think it's snitching if you tell on your man. Because it's like, it, 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 it's like this, right? If we do, if, if, if I'm a street dude mm -hmm. and some street stuff go down, like I can't be a drug dealer and you rob somebody with me and I tell, like, I don't think you should be able to do that. I don't think that's right because you participate in a certain lifestyle. You live a certain type of life. So you're going to go with the code of that lifestyle. Code of that lifestyle. Now, you live by it. You I'm live not going to jail for nobody. So me either. I ain't going to jail for nobody around, either. Around, around walls. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Listen. <laughs> you should probably come down there and tell them because if not, I got a story to tell. I'm not going to do no time for nobody, but people know that about me. So you would be a fool to do some crime and, and think walls is riding with you because walls is not riding with you. I'm not, you know, I'm anti jail. You know, I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> you put me in, in a cell, I'm in there, can't sleep, you know, can't even feel like I can't breathe. So no, I'm not, I'm not going to do no time. For nobody. Only if, if, if you find me going to jail, I mean somebody to mess with my family in some type of way, and I had to go out there and do something. Yeah. And then I'm resigned to, you know, whatever come with it is going to come with it. But, you know, as far as it's going to go out there and break the law and, you know, I see something I think I want to take it. No, nah, I'm not doing that. I, I'm going to do it out. But if you mess with the family, yeah, you might you might see me in a an SCDC suit, you know, um, you know, eating eating the setup, you know, doing whatever I got to do. But I doing prefer not to do that. Doing yeah, chin ups on the yard. Up, yeah, get, 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 trying to get small. Keep a person up off me. But, you know, the bottom line is. So you're trying to keep them off you. <laughs> don't do no crime around walls if you wanted to remain anonymous. Because if they come get me, you know, hey, I'm not going to go volunteer. But if you come get me, yeah, man. I don't know why Shaq did it. I was trying to tell him not to do it, but yeah. Now, nah, bottom line, though, I, I don't hang. I really don't hang out with people like that. So I, that's something I would never have to worry about. I'm just making you know a joke about it now, but you know I don't hang out with, with people like that. People know me and they know my character. They know you know walls ain't gonna do that. So straight and narrow. Same here. Narrow. Same yeah. here. You know I ain't I ain't gonna you know. But see, my thing is you know I don't I don't hang around that type of stuff. So that energy ain't around me. You know what I mean? And thank yeah. God I haven't been in that situation where something happened. Like one of my homies did something, and I had to, was in a situation where it was like, well, I got to choose between telling and keeping it real. You know, but um, if I ain't got nothing to do with something. More than likely, I'm probably going to just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I need a lawyer present. Because I feel like the more you talk in any situation, they're like, well, this crime happened. Let's say somebody robbed somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And you was there. You know all these details, but you ain't had nothing to do with it. You're right. We caught you. We, we came to you for a reason. So you mean to tell me you know all this, but you ain't did nothing? Yeah, I, I don't know. I yeah, I know a little bit about it, but I wouldn't participate. I but didn't do nothing. You you know all this, but you ain't do nothing. But if you watch First 48, a lot of times people think that, like let's say we, we go on a robbery and I kill a dude. You didn't kill him, but I killed him. So when you get in there, you 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 start admitting stuff. Like, you know what? Yeah, I was there, but, you know, Walls was a shooter. Well, you know, pretty much the hands of one, the hands of all. <laughs> you might as well have bust a gun too because you're going for the same thing. Yeah. Now, one crime that, that gets a lot of people, and a lot of people don't um, understand how this works. Let's say me and you go in to to rob a store, and they kill you. I'm going to get charged with your murder because we was going to commit a felony, and you just, just cause, since you happen to get killed, they're going to charge me with the murder. A lot of people don't realize that. Why? If you, yeah, if you go in there and you um you you going to do something, and let's just say your man get killed, you're going to get charged for it. 
What? Even though you didn't, that, that was your man. You 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 didn't kill him or nothing like that. You're going to jail. For what him. if he slips and falls and busts his head open and dies? Y'all was going in there to commit a, 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 a felony, and that happened. You gonna get charged with his murder? Even if it's a freak accident. I don't, it might be a freak accident to you. But to the but law. if y'all wasn't going to do that, that freak accident wouldn't have occurred. So you yeah, you gonna do some time. What? That's how it work out, man. So a lot of people, you know, if you're gonna be a criminal, if somebody's gonna be a criminal. I would advise them to learn the law. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that people think, you know, like, oh, man, they can't charge you with that. Tell you about a strange case. And you could you could read about it. It was a dude named Daryl Lane, worked at the sheriff's department. He got out of his car, was chasing two dudes. He fell down and died at a heart attack. They charged, uh, one of the dudes came back, got on the police radio, said, hey, one of your officers is down. Y'all should come over here and uh, help him out. They didn't charge him because he came back. The one who kept going, they charged him. What? They charged him. They said, had he not ran... A man would have ran after him had a heart attack. What? Now, everybody would say, oh, man, you can't charge him with that. All right. That's, that's what everybody thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm like, man, now they probably can't charge him. Oh, yeah. They can, and they did. So I was telling somebody, if, if somebody was living that lifestyle, which I wouldn't advise for anybody to do, you should learn all the rules and regulations of being in that lifestyle so that you'll be aware of what can happen. You know, watch First 48. You know, um, this dude was on there all the time. I'd be like, man, it was one dude I was watching. He was telling the cop, man, y'all can't charge me. He, he got life. But he, he was pretty brave because he thought that uh, since he didn't pull the trigger, they couldn't charge him with it. But, you know, hands of one, hands of all kicked in. He doing life without the possibility of parole. What? So, you know, if, if, you, if you subscribe to that way of thinking and that yeah. lifestyle, you know, you got to be prepared for everything that's coming along with it. Yeah. And I wasn't prepared for all that. That's why I didn't live that lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I thought I wanted to be into it. I had a lot of friends that was into that lifestyle. And most of the guys me and Mike knew is dead or doing forever in prison. I mean, very few, or, or, or drug addicts. Very few people that me and him grew up with are uh, still alive right about now. Or doing, doing well. well, yeah. Yeah. It's the same for me. I thought I wanted to be a part of that life too. But you saw my transition from being a, te- a preteen riding in the neighborhood riding bikes to wanting to be a thug and then me just going away from that you know what i mean like you saw that transition okay. literally from start to finish you know because i literally grew up two streets over from right where you where you lived or whatever but it's it's so crazy like our story how, how similar our stories are because i thought the streets was for me i thought the same thing like but it just wasn't for me like it really wasn't you know and people all of my home like i talked to my bro snoop not uh snoop that you know but my other homie snoop he just came home he did like seven, six or seven years in prison, SEDC. But, you know, we were talking and he was like, man, you know, uh, I'm proud of you, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're doing your thing. You're doing real good, bro. Woo. And I'm like, bro, listen, it's, it's, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not easy to be a straight and narrow kind of dude mm-hmm. when you got all your homeboys. I might be the brokest one in a room of my homeboys. But they all doing illegal stuff to get their money. I know what come with that, so I'm not going to do that. But at the same time, think about what might play in my mind. Like, well, bro just pulled out $20,000. You know what I'm saying? He just went to get some veneers in his mouth. Or he just went to go get a new truck. And he just went to go do this and buy this and buy that. And they, I might be sipping a $30 bottle of Patron. They sipping a $150 bottle of 1942. Just imagine how hard it is for me not to participate in that lifestyle. Well, let me say this. You can sleep well at night. You know ain't nobody coming to kick in That's your door. That's a fact. I mean, when you live that lifestyle, every day when you get up and go out there, could be your last day. Get murked. Yeah. You know, get catch a case and be gone forever. I mean, you look at um Cheo. I mean, I don't know how much time he's doing. I know a he long knows, time? Probably about 30 or 40 years. Yeah. You know, for me, anything over two, three days is a long time for me. But 30 years... I couldn't even uh, process that concept of being locked up that long. I mean, what, what, what did he get for it? I mean, nothing. Nothing. You know, I think he got a child out here. Excuse me. So it just didn't make no sense. But he was on that. He was on that road for for a minute. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like a, all of a sudden thing. It was it was a progression. He was doing little things, and he graduated to bigger things. He but, wanted. I, I feel like some people just want. Like they literally created that situation for themselves what i mean by that is like they did everything in their power to be in the situation that they're in right now but i bet you i feel like cheo was one of those people i really believe that like he was really just doing the dumbest stuff you could ever and had no reason to he had a good family he did he had a good family but if he if, he, if there was such a such thing as a time machine and he could go back i bet you <laughs> 
he wouldn't do what he did. I mean, oh yeah, all that stuff seemed wonderful, well but when you really think about it, yeah. if you catch 30 years, let's just say you only end up doing 20 of them. When you come back out, who gonna remember you? You know, a lot of people say, well man, you know, uh, I kept it real, I ain't go to jail. Well, keeping it real come with a price. You know, if you keep it real, you know, the Lord keep you locked up. You go ahead and keep it real, all that, man, I ain't telling all that, okay, they, they, you know, that, that's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But when you really sit back and think about it, a dude that come home 20 or 30 years from now, very few people are gonna remember that he kept it real back in 2020. That's a fact. You know, you coming home in 2045. That's they, a fact. Like, man, who? So, so Snoop, damn, man, I remember that name, but, you know, ain't nobody really checking me. Nobody, nobody thinking about that. So, oh, man, let's, let's have some money for him when he come home because he kept it real. No, it don't work like that. No. It sounds good, though. It do. It sounds real good. You know, I, I be, I be, uh, <laughs> the realest thing you can do is keep it real with yourself. Be real with who you are. My thing is this. You know, if you're going to be a street dude, live a street life, live by the code of the streets. Take everything that come with it. Live by it. When I was out here doing what I was doing, whatever, you know, acting a fool, guess what? I live by the code. So guess what? When it came time to get in trouble, even though I had nothing to do with what I got caught up for, Brian, not telling nothing. I'm not telling on the soul. I ain't doing that because that's just me. You kept it real. I, 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 I co-sign on that for you. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Because these niggas, because these dudes be looking at me. I was in me. a position to know if you had to. I'd have been in a position to know and say, yeah, yeah. Shaq gave information. Yeah. You know, he's he was a, a cooperating uh, individual. You yeah. Know, but you 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 did you did it right. You did the right thing. And the good thing is that it only took that one time That's for you fact. to learn. Like yeah. for me, it took one time. I tell anybody. Back then, though, would you? You wouldn't have told. No, not back you then. wouldn't have read it. Back then, because you was. But see, I really feel like you know that just. What it, what what that means to me is when, when you keep it real like that, like and you don't tell because you live that life, that shows the type of person that you are, like the that type of individual character. It means something. It, it means something. The name means, I mean, like, you think about it. I know a lot of people that, that's walking around Columbia today that, you know, if they get caught today, they, they're going to tell because they've told before. You know, so it's, it's nothing to say, you know, but in front of people, they're they going to talk all that, you know, stuff, way to stop snitching shirts and all that. But, you know, deep down, they know that if they catch a case today, they're going to tell today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got to keep it real with yourself. I knew that I wasn't built to go behind the walls and sit back there and, you know, make setups and be away from my family for 20, 30 years. So selling, knowing that. Telling jail stories. Yeah, and man. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. I was uh, I just came in the army, and we was riding from Fort Gordon, Georgia, coming to South Carolina. A co uh, highway patrolman stops four of us in the car. The dude driving, when well, he riding dirty. So uh, when the cops stopped us, they coming up with a plan to what they could do to the cop. You know, man. You know, we could probably get his gun and do all this. You were in the military. I was in the military. These dudes was in the military too. All, all, all four of us in the military. What? So um, you know, they said that I was taking the punk. Well, I said, listen, man. It's just a ticket. That's all. I mean, that's all we're going to get is a ticket. Let, let's just get the money together and pay the ticket. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the best thing to do. All the talking about you want to kill this dude and, and all of this. I said, man, if y'all do something to him, I'm going to be right here waiting, you know, for when the cops come. You know, y'all can say I'm a punk, whatever. But I wasn't going to jail for no capital murder for killing no cops so that we could get out of a ticket. I, I was too smart for that. Now, they went back and told everybody, man, Wall said if we would have did it, you know, uh, he would have told, uh, yeah, and I said, man, listen, I tell anybody, we can stand up in front of a thousand people, I would say yes, if y'all would have killed him, I, because it was unnecessary, you know, there was no need, you know, to do that, but, you know, they thought uh, that that was, uh, that was gangster or whatever, now, if they'd have got caught back in 84 for killing somebody, uh, a cop in South Carolina, they probably would still be in SCDC with a number now. They would have made a spectacle you know? out of them. Yeah, I've been retired, you know, and I'd have kept it real with myself, I'm not going to prison. For, for no nonsense, you know, that's just me. I'm not going out and robbing nobody. Still, only way I'm gonna have to go is if somebody do something to my family. And then, you know, I'm gonna have to go sit back there probably forever, you mm -hmm. know, but other than that, I'm not, I'm not, you know, people be having road rage and somebody uh, in South Carolina, I think it was in Georgetown last week, killed two people, road rage incident, somebody hit his car. He never had to worry about driving another car for a long time now. You know, by the time he come home, he might have flying cars out there, you know, but the bottom line is what he did made absolutely no sense. But a snap decision, you know, could take you, take you out off the streets for a long time, you know. And I value my freedom, you know. You think about it. Anything else, you know, you, you can get back. You know, if you lose some money, somebody can send you some money. 
you know, time, can't nobody donate no time. Can't nobody say, Shaq, man, I'm going to give you three years. You got 50 years? Man, I, I do three for you. Man, I do four. No, if they give you 50, Shaq doing 50. Yeah. Ain't nobody, you know, that, that's one thing that nobody, nobody could give you, man. Yeah. And you think about, I mean, if you ever just, ever just get on the SCDC website and just type in a common name like Williams and look at how many Williams is locked up and just look at the time that they got. And a lot of them look like me and you. And they're doing a whole lot of time, you know. I tell a lot of people, man, you know, I, when I started, when I did the prison episodes, you know, I told people, man, like, I don't look down on people in prison unless you mess with kids mm. or um, unless you molest the kids or, 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 or old people or did something to women, you know, I, I don't look down on you, man, because a lot of dudes, or you just did something real stupid that just didn't need to be done. But if you was out here providing for your family or defending yourself or doing that, I don't look down on you, man, because I was one decision away from being in prison. You know, had my had my case that I got locked up for not went the way that it went, man. I, I went, yeah, it would have been bad, man. You know, it wouldn't be no muddy waters, man. You know, I was facing real time at a young age, man. Some bloody waters, cause you'd have been in there during yeah. the riots and all that. Yeah, it would have yeah, been, been muddy. It would have been bloody. Yeah, it'd have been bad. You know, so I don't look down on dudes in prison. You know, but I also do recognize where I went right. And they went left, you know, like where those guys kept doing what we were doing, the wrong stuff, you know, getting in trouble and living that life. Like, I, I left that alone. Like, you know what, I'm going to go this way. So I, I do recognize the difference in that. But now nah, I don't look down on guys in prison, man, you know, because we were one decision away. You know, I, well, I was one decision away from being yeah, where they at, you know. Yeah. And, and like I said, there's a lot of people here in Columbia that, that I've wrestled. When they see me out, they speak. And my wife will be like. You know, how you know him? I saw you. I locked him or her up back in whenever. She's like, and they still speak to you? So, you know, it wasn't that uh, I was a bad one. They did something wrong, and I just had to do the paperwork. You know, it wasn't that I put them in jail. They put themselves in jail. And it didn't make them a bad person. When we see each other, we still speak. You know, just like uh, I think I think you was over here on uh, that uh, Halloween when, when TP was over here. That was the last time I saw TP. Over. Yeah, and you think about it. I mean, all of us was cool. And I know, I knew y'all when y'all were younger. It was a little bit wilder, but I mean... You know, y'all y'all grew from that, and, and we was good. You know, yeah. I would never hold somebody's you know past against them because I got a past too. You know what I'm saying? I, I did things that it wasn't the right thing, but I learned from it. Yeah. You know, so. And I think that's why so many people respect you because you never look down on them. Like you always treated people like people. You always, and then you didn't take your job to heart. You know. No. No. You know, like a lot of you lame cops. I wanted to say your name, but I ain't going to say your name. No, don't say nobody's name. I ain't going to say nobody's name. name. But, you know, like, for real, a lot of these dudes be lame because it's like, you know, I can tell you never had friends in school. Like, a lot of you dudes didn't have friends. You know, you want to take your frustrations and anger out on cool dudes. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? That look like me. You know, I probably remind you of the guys that used to bully you back in school. Or the, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what type of dudes I'm talking about, Walls. You well, know? See, I feel like I, I was a popular dude in high school. You was school. cool. I went to the army. I, I was I was popular. Had had a good career. So coming in and giving me some authority over somebody on the street, it didn't make me, it didn't make me who I am. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I was. I, I felt like I was the man before I was a cop. You so were who you were before. I left being a cop now to retire. And I still think I'm the man. So yeah, you know that that didn't make me. But you, you think about it, there are some people that may get in the position of authority and, and could it go to your head? Yeah, good. That's a lot of power. You think about it. You you can you can take somebody's freedom if if the situation warrants it. You can take somebody's life if the situation warrants it. So that's a lot of uh, power to to give somebody, and that's why a person got to be real um, mature and responsible about it. You know, I've had situations where I, I could have shot somebody. I, I I can say in my in, in the line of duty, I never never pulled the trigger on anybody. Have I pointed my gun at people? Yeah, I did, but never had to pull the trigger, even though I could have and would have been justified. But you know, that's the last thing in the world I would want to do is take somebody's life. That, that's forever. You know, when you, when, I, when you pull that trigger, you know, ain't, ain't no taking that bullet back. So, um, one, one situation I, I'll always remember, because I just seen the lady the other day. It was a lady, she was uh, shoplifting. and uh, But the thing she was stealing was diapers and milk. And, um, you know, when we caught her, when I caught her, you know, they wanted a uh, store, wanted to press charge. I said, well, why don't we do this? You know, because there's always an alternative, a better alternative to everything. I said, why don't you just let me put her on trespass notice? She can never come back to the store, and I'll pay for the items that she had. And I did. And like I said, I seen her recently. And uh, every time I see her, she always tell me, that, that's the officer that 
you know, that, that kind of saved me from, from getting arrested and paid for the stuff. And, you know, I ain't do nothing that was, it, it, it's nothing that's spectacular because the stuff didn't cost that much. But it was just the fact that some people wouldn't have did it. Some people, and, and I can't say that they would have been wrong for not doing it because she did break the law. So they could have decided to take her to jail. But, you know, I, I know what it's like to be broke, you know, and uh, it, it's not a good feeling. And so she was doing what she had to do. It wasn't the right thing. I make sure I said again, it wasn't the right thing what she was doing. But I understood why she was doing what she was doing. And that's why I went ahead and came out of my pocket to make the situation uh, a little bit better. Like I said, that don't make me nobody special. I don't you know, want, I ain't want no awards or nothing like that. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, when I did this job, I had the opportunity to change somebody's life. You know, it's kids that went through the programs that I did. And I see them now and they said, man, when you took me down to the jail, that scared me. But when I came down there to spend a night down there in the cell, you know, that, that changed me. And that makes me feel like, you know what, that's, that's why I became a cop. I didn't become a cop to lock people up, to try to kill nobody. I became a cop to, to change people's lives. And that's one thing I want. You know, with all the unrest that's going on now, a lot of people feel like, you know, they hate cops. You got to think about it. It takes a lot to run towards danger for somebody you don't know. If me, when, when I was a cop, if I was in the mall and heard gunshots, the whole mall would be running the opposite way. I would, in turn, have to run towards the gunshots and maybe not make it home to my family that night. And that takes a special type of person to say, you know what, I'm going to run towards that gunfire to make sure that I save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Even though I know my family is nowhere near the mall, but I'm still going to make sure that I try to save somebody's life. And, um, you know, when I was a cop, I would have done that because that's what I signed up for. Just like when I said, if somebody's a criminal, they got to take everything that they signed up for. When you're a cop, whatever comes up, you got to, you know, you got to, that's what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. You know? That's real. So, um, I just think that, like I said, a lot of cops get a bad rap. Uh, I'm surprised, you know, both of my sons follow my footsteps and decide to be cops. And um, Thorough cops, too. Thorough dudes. Yeah, and I Thorough think... Thorough dudes. I think they seen the respect that I got, and I think they like that. And, yeah. and, you know, my dad was in law enforcement. I seen the respect. We would go places. Everybody called him Mr. Walls. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Walls? And I was like, Dad, where you know him from? He's like, oh, man, uh, you know, he was locked up out on Rikers Island. That's where my dad worked there for 30 years. And I was like, okay. And I just like the respect that people gave him, you know, when they talked to him. And he kept it real with them, and, you know, people didn't see him as the bad guy because of his career or his, you know, profession, but that's the same thing I try to tell people out there. Cops are just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? We got, we laugh, we joke, we get scared. I mean, I'd be lying if I said that if the whole time I was doing the job, I, there were times that I wasn't scared. It was times I was, I was in fear, <laughs> you know? And, um, but you gotta be able to keep going on. Like we was uh, chasing, <laughs> I'll tell you a, a quick story. We, it was a robbery uh, near Decker Boulevard and we, we we looking behind houses, so we come to this. Was it like a? Was, did they rob an establishment or they rob? They robbed a bank. I think it was a, the TD Bank. It was, it was some bank that they robbed. But I'm on a you know I'm with a group of guys and we looking, so we come upon like a shed in the backyard. So the other dude that I was with, he thought quick. He said, "Walls." He said, "I'm gonna open the door, and you rush in this." I'm like, "Yeah, well I couldn't have thought of that." So I'm like, "All right, man." Now I'm thinking, you know, because the, the 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 people who robbed the bank, they had already shot at some cops. So I'm, thinking, oh, shoot. so I'm thinking, all right, so he's, he's getting ready to open the door, and man, my heart is pumping. I mean, just beating. So he opened the door, and I swear, I'm glad nobody was in there, because I probably would have shot, you know, as soon as I came up in there, but nobody was in there. But it just showed me that, you know, when, when you're scared, you got to keep it moving. You, gotta, you still got to do what you got to do. And, um, you know, the, the other guy, like I said, he was smart. He was just the door opener. I'm the guy that if somebody would have been there, they would have shot me. <laughs> you're right, right, right. You know, uh, <laughs> It was, uh, it was it was interesting. It was interesting, but that's what I signed up for. So, so you would have died for the badge. I, I would have had to that day. I mean, if I would, would I, you have died proudly, like knowing, like, okay, I did what I set out to do, like proudly, like, like you know how, like in movies, when people die, they come back and they narrate the story and stuff like that. <laughs> would you have died and been proud narrating your story, narrating your autobiography? Would you be like, I was. I died and I'm rested knowing that I died for the badge and what I set out to do and this is what came with it. Yeah, I, I was or would you be like, dog, I don't want to. I, if I got to die, then I got to die because you can't control when yeah, you die. Yeah, but yeah. like, if I had a choice, dog, I wouldn't die for this. I'd rather yeah, I, die I, for I, my I, kids. You feel me? See, now I can say that. But back then, I had to do, I mean, you think about it. We was doing search once. You run up, hitting the door. And all, you in the line of fire. And I mean, I did that many a day. You know, we run up hitting doors and 
do what we got to do now. I would have wanted to die now. Let me let me make sure I put that out. That that wouldn't have been high on my list. Like man, I don't buy dying in line to do this. <laughs> they name the street after me. Like this walk. No, I don't want that named after me. You know, I want to be around the city. No, I don't want nothing yeah. named after me. I wanted to live, but I, I did enjoy the job. Yeah. Because you you know when you especially when you take somebody off the street that's that really deserve to be taken off the street. Somebody did something to kids. Somebody did something to older people. You know, I feel like this. If if you really want to. You know, do something. Do something. Somebody got a fighting chance. You know, run up on somebody. You know, don't run up on no seventy-two year old. Run up on somebody about thirty-two and go see if, if you really about that life. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of these guys, they they're gonna pick the path of least resistance. They're gonna they 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 they're gonna rape somebody. They're gonna rape that old person that can't give no fight or a real young person that can't give no fight. So, you know, when you go to jail and get what you're supposed to get, uh, I know you're supposed to remain professional as an officer, but you know. Hey, if you getting if you getting what you gave out, if it was good enough for you to give, it's good enough. I feel like for you to get, you know, that's real, and that that's what it is. So, bottom line, don't be out there doing crime if you ain't really about that life. Because if you, if you ever watched any of the videos of uh, when they had that riot, I think they killed like six or seven people at uh, in Lee County. You know, that was short person if you really about that life. If you if you really do, because shooting somebody is easy. I mean, you can do that from a distance. But to, to, to get close to somebody, go knife to knife. I ain't about that life. I would hate to have to go. To, I might mess around and, and zig when I should have zagged, and you mess around and cut me from A to Z. No, I, no, that, it takes a lot of heart, you know, to have to do that. And I'm not about that life. I yeah. tell anybody, I'm not about that. Now, if I had to be about that life, you know, somebody ran up on me and all I had was not. Then, then yeah. But if I if if I had a choice in the matter, yeah, I'm choosing to live out here. And I'm walking with a firearm. So yeah. if you do something, come do something to me. I don't have to get that close. I just need to apply a little bit of pressure. And, um, you know, somebody's going to have to, uh, there's going to be some slow singing and flower bringing if you come messing with walls. Because I, <laughs> I'm slow. older, dude. I'm not fighting nobody. I'm 54 years. I'm not fighting nobody, man. I, I got asthma. I'm not trying to fight with nobody. Yeah. If you run up on me, I, I got to make sure that I even the, 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 the playing field. Yeah. That means... Come with that, that that with the pistol. That that a great yeah. Yeah, that that that's that's gonna equal all that. You you might be in great shape and you know you're doing thousands of push ups, but <laughs> if you come mess with me, I, I feel sorry. <laughs> I can't do a thousand. It's, it's gonna take me a minute to do a hundred, but I can't apply five pounds of pressure to that pistol and that I, that could equal all of that. So yeah, leave me alone, please. Don't don't mess with me. Right, right. My granddad, he was a cop, you know, for a long, for, for like, I, uh, I want to say like 20 years, 20 something years. Mm -hmm. And he told me a story about how he picked, you know, he took this guy to jail. The guy was, you know, talking crazy to him. He like, my MF, I'm a, ooh, ooh, ooh. My granddaddy said, man, he called me one too many MFs. He said, I slammed that car in park, parked in the middle of the road, yeah. let him out his handcuffs, and oh. we got to going at it. He said he beat the brakes off him. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to like go toe to toe with a dude, like well, on the so, streets? I, I'm not gonna say the dude's name, but people who went to LR would know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I went toe to toe with somebody uh, when I worked at uh, LR, and uh, I came out good. The other person, not so good, but yeah, I was okay. But um, they thought in your mind though, when you going toe to toe with this dude, he younger than you. Uh, but he I, in high school. Yeah, but, but you can you can, uh, can. He had no win, and I, I knew he had no win. How did you know situation. he had no win? I knew me, and I mean back then I'm working at school. I'm, I'm working out at the school. I'm lifting weights. In the, I'm going in the weight room every day, you know. And um, I knew he had a plus. He was in front of everybody. <laughs> so you're not going to lose no fight no, in front of everybody. I'm not going to lose. So yeah, he if, if he see this video, he know that it's, it's in reference to him. But yeah, anybody that went to LR that was out there in 08, that that scene that would say yeah you know walls uh walls took it to him you know it, it was it wasn't even it wasn't it wasn't even close you know but he told me later on that he had because he was a gang member I ain't gonna say what gang he was a gang member and he thought his friends would jump in and help him out and uh you know when we got into it they backed up and it was just me and him I'm like 210 maybe 215 he's probably like 130 140 and I was I was really thinking why why would you swing at me? But later on he told me like man walls I thought I thought my boys was gonna help, and uh, they didn't help, and it was it was not good you know it was not good for him. And he went to jail. And he went to jail after that after after wearing that whooping yeah he we went went uh, directly to jail you know and um, he don't talk to me to this day you know um, I reached out to him about about two years ago just to 
see what's up. Um, and he was like, man, uh, don't don't call me no more. Because I knew when his family, I said, well, how's so-and-so doing? I said, why don't you give him a call? So I called him, but yeah, he didn't want to talk. And I understand, if somebody had did me like that, I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> You know, I probably would talk to him either. You beat him that uh, bad, Wallace? It wasn't good. You punished him? It's not good. It wasn't good. How's he doing, though? Like He's doing all right in life. Yeah, he's doing, he doing, he doing decent in life. He's not, uh, you know, about that life there no more. But um, I don't know what it was, man. He just thought he should swing at me. Because I was pretty cool with most of the people at the school. I wouldn't have... I he just out of nowhere swung on you? Well, what happened, I had to approach him about a situation. He had threw a, a drink in a girl's face. He had a slushy. He threw it in the face. So when I came over there, I just said, hey, man, come in and holler at you. And I touched him. And, man, get the F off me and, and start acting wild. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay. I said, man, you know, just calm down. Nah. And so I said, right, come with me. And I went to grab him. And that's when he swung at me. So I, you know, weaved it. And uh, it was on and popping at that point. And, you, um, in this, you in the best shape of your life at this time. Oh, yeah. I'm like, let me see. It was a whole eight. <laughs> what, 12 years? I was like, I was 42, but I was good. You, you was know? hitting and holding like Mike say. Yes, yeah. You was hitting holding. I was good. He was not. <laughs> he was not. Like I said, if he see this video, he, he don't remember that day. Oh, wait, Wallace, you was, in, you was in great shape. You in pretty good shape now, but back then you was in. Back then, yeah, I was in phenomenal shape. Yeah. I was, I was working out. Like I said, every day I go to the weight room, work out, because there was a lot of fights at the school when I worked there. So, you know, you had to be in shape because you just never know. You know, um, I remember a kid punched me uh, my first year there. Punched me in the back of the head. I, I never forget him. Um, he hit you hard. <laughs> he hit you hard. Now, now to, be, to, to be honest, I really didn't feel it. I mean, because I was swiping, I was going to break up a fight, and I bumped into him. And he said, MF, you ain't going to say excuse me? <laughs> like, yeah, right. And uh, when I walked by, he swung. And he realized that he messed up because after he swung, he took off running. And um, he ended up going to jail uh, the following week. That was on a Friday. The next week, uh, you know, he ended up going to jail. You remember who it was? I remember his name and everything. And the funny thing is, when it came time to go to court, I dropped all the charges. And everybody was like, man, why? As I felt like the day that he, he, I think he spent a day or two in jail before he bonded out. I felt like that was enough time. You know, I sat down and talked to him. He's like, man, I don't know what I was thinking. And I was thinking, does he really need that on his record, you know, as a young black man? Not saying it would have made a difference if he was white, but as a young man, black man, did he need that on his record? You know, so when he goes to get a job, and so you assaulted the police officer. I thought, no. You know, my supervisor was mad at me for dropping the charges, but... I felt like he got enough out of those two days in jail. I mean, I think that was enough. He didn't need a permanent uh, thing on his record, you know what I'm saying, to hold him up. So, nah, I, I dropped all the charges. That's real. And I, I felt good about my decision, and he's doing good in life now. That's good. You know? He's doing good. That's good. That's real good. Most people wouldn't have took that. If, if they had got punched, most people couldn't have. I'd have been punched before. I'd have been hit before. You know, I'd have been in plenty of fights growing up. I grew up in Brooklyn in bed style. I'd have had plenty of fights, so getting hit, I mean, that, was, that wasn't a, you know, that wasn't going to uh, end of the world for me. You know, I, I could take a hit. But uh, some people would have been so mad, they'd have been like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I got to do. And I can't say that they would be wrong because the law says that if you hit a police officer, you know, you go to jail and it'll be on your record and all that. But I'm just saying for me, I didn't, uh, I think I was a different type of cop. Yeah, you, know you was saying? a different type of man. Like, he's a kid at the end of the day. Yeah. So, he's a kid at the end of the day. He made a mistake. He got caught up in the moment and, and he hit me. And uh, yeah. dealt with it, and um, he doesn't have it on his record now, so his life is is okay. You you did you did that for a lot of people, man. I did. There's a lot you of people that, that for, can say. Now, I, I, out of the percentage of people you looked out for, right, mm -hmm. in, in situations like that, how many of them turned out good? Like, what percentage would you say turned out good, and what percentage would you say as opposed to who did? I would say the majority of them turned out good. The majority of those people, because. You know, I'm the type to give you a, a good long lecture. A person might not want to hear everything I'm going to say, but I said, listen, I'm not going to take it to jail, but you're going to listen to me. And, and we would talk, and, um, you know, like I said, when I got arrested, that cop talked me to death, you know, about, you know, decisions I made, how I embarrassed my, my father because my father was in law enforcement. I had to listen to that, and, you know, it was effective. You know, that was, that was better than giving me uh, some time in prison. You know, I had to listen to that, and I had to go home, and i never forget when my mother came down to visit me, um, she was crying. And that, that hurt worse than any amount of time they could have gave me to know that I was the cause of my mother crying. You know, uh, my daddy, you know, he didn't cry. He looked at me like, well, you messed up, you know. And I was like, yeah, I did mess up. But, um, you know, your mother got a, got, a, got a way of getting through to you when nobody else can. Mm -hmm. You know, my daddy gave me that tough love. My mother, she was that, that nurturing type. And um, I, think it's, I think it's important 
Uh, it may not always happen, but I think it's good to have two parents because it's hard, like for like I see a lot of single parents, a lot of single mothers. It's hard for a single mother to be the disciplinarian and the nurturer at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was good. Like my dad might bust me up, and my mom come in. Oh, come here, baby. It's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's good to have that. But um, you know, it's good to have that tough love too. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I thought my dad. I was like, man, he don't like me. You know, cause he had a lot of rules and everything. But when I look back on it now, that's what I needed. You know, I needed that structure in my life. So. People, I, I don't know, did you think uh, that I treated Jordan a rough? I mean, what did you think? Because you used to be around us. Mm -mm. No? No, I don't think you treated him rough. I think you, you know, you you demanded respect from your kids. You you wanted the best for them. Mm -hmm. You know, you wanted them to, to be respectful um, children that turned out to be respectful adults. Mm -hmm. And you just wanted what was best for them. That's true. All your kids turned out great, you know. None of them was in the streets. None of them became I criminal. I going for that. Yeah. You ain't going to be in those streets. Anymore. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. That wasn't going to work for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, but you know what, though? It didn't turn out. You know, a lot of people didn't want their kids to be in the streets, but they ended up going to the streets. True. Like my family. Like, they didn't want me to be with whatever, but guess what? <laughs> I turned out at, at that time to be the opposite of what they wanted me to be. Of course, I made a 180 and turned it around, but still, you know. But, you know, they, they turned out great. I don't think you were too strict on them because they still had lives. They I mean, they... Then, I'm yeah. strict on him. I, I didn't. I didn't. If you if you ever have a conversation with him, so yeah, I, I didn't play with him. But my reason for not playing with him, you got to think about it. I'm running these programs, so I see all these kids coming down at us, and I see what can happen when a child don't have structure in their life. So I'm like, man, I ain't gonna let my child be like that. And you know, you, I, a lot of people I'm taking to jail. I'm like, man, you know, these are young cats. You know, when I first got to LR, it was some cats that was involved in the murder. One got 30 years, other one got 45 years. They was both 17 years old. And I'm like, man, I, I got to make sure my sons is right. But, you know, I think a lot of times people focus on their sons and kind of forget about their daughters because they think, well, daughter ain't going to be in the street. Well, you know, you got to make sure that they got certain life lessons that they got to get as well mm -hmm. so that they can be, you know, successful in life later on. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad none of my daughters, uh, you know, had any kids yet. Or, and I'm not knocking anybody who, who does at a young age because things happen at some times. But I'm just saying I'm glad for mine that, you know, they're all uh, in school, in college now, and nobody got any kids yet, and everybody's living their life. My sons, both of them got a career, and I'm uh, I'm just happy and I'm fortunate, you know, because just because I was a cop didn't mean that my kids was going to turn out good because uh, anything happened. My dad yeah. was a cop, and I went to jail. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But you know what, though? You turned it around. And, I, and I'm fortunate for my situation. I'm sure you're fortunate for your situation that happened. I'm fortunate for mine. You know, me going to jail that one day taught me, like, the biggest lesson life could teach. The biggest lesson life could teach. And that's um, karma is real. What goes around comes around. Because while I didn't get in trouble for something that I actually did, I st that still was indirectly like karma from stuff that I had did prior to. So it was like, I, it was like, I, the, and, and one of the reasons I didn't tell, of course, I, you know, I lived by a certain code. I wasn't about to tell on nobody, especially my friends. But also I chalked it up to like, this is karma. Like I deserve this. In my mind, like, of course you, man, it's messed up. I'm in jail for something I didn't. But I also felt like, yo, like, I deserve this. Like, you know how much stuff I did that if I would have got caught for stuff that I actually did, bro, like, we wouldn't be talking right now. Period. You know what I'm saying? We be, it'd be muddy waters from a cell. Real talk. So I'm like, I'm glad I got caught for this. And not nothing else. Yeah, because good thing the pastor was a praying man. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a praying man and he had forgiveness in his heart and stuff like that, you know, because had it been a different situation, like I remember one time we were at a um, party, right? You know, we, we got into a big brawl with a bunch of people, man, like big, I'm talking about big brawl. We went there just to fight. It was maybe like 20 of us. TP was there. Snoop was there. I was there. You know, we was just a bunch of us, right? So this dude, I ain't going to say his name. He had a gun, a revolver. Mind you, the, the, the party that we in is lit up. It's lights is on, so mm -hmm. you can see everything. Uh -huh. You know when people get to fight and they turn the lights on. My man pulls out the revolver, puts it to this dude's head, click, click. Mind you, 
He's like where the camera is. Mm -hmm. I'm right here, you know, standing up. Yeah. Like, like you know, we fighting. So we, you on point, your head on the swivel. I see him pull the gun out. Click. If he would have shot dude, his blood would have been all in my face. He clicked twice. Click. Looked at the gun. Click. That was God there, boy. Man, he looked, he was like, you know with a revolver you can see. He was like, oh, yeah. man, I don't got no bullets. Punch dude, knocked him out. This dude was big, the dude that punched him. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yo, just imagine had he shot him. Everybody part of that was there. That was, especially if you was in the vicinity of him. I was right there. I was going to prison for the rest of my life. I say, yo, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. God that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Thank God that it didn't happen. Thank God that I didn't, you know. Yeah, man. I, I, it's been many situations like that, man. Like, and that was the, every time I think about that situation, I cringe. Like, what if he would have had one different. bullet? Your life would have been different. Would have been way different, man. It been situations like I remember back in the day before I graduated from high school. Um, my man's, you know, my, my my best friend Snoop called me like, "Yo, bro, mind you, this whole day I'm trying to link with them. Mm -hmm. Whole day, like they not coming. Snoop, like, yeah, I'm on the way." <laughs> Three hours rolled by, he still ain't even on the way. I'm like, bro, what's up? So 11, 12 o'clock come by, he nowhere to be found. So I'm like, man, I'm about to go to bed. He called me like 12 o'clock, like, yo, bro, we about to come get you. Get dressed. I had to go the next day to get my license. I was mm. supposed to get my license. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. I could have swung it, but I was like, I'm going to be tired. Long story short, I called Snoop the next day. After I went to go get my license or whatever, he not answering the phone. I'm like, and his phone going straight to voicemail. I'm like, that ain't like Snoop. Sno anybody that knows Snoop no, knows Snoop. He gonna answer the phone. His phone is going to be charged fully. Mm -hmm. He could be dead broke. He could have, he could be, he could be kicked out of his mama house. His phone going to be charged. He going to find a way to charge his phone. That's just Snoop. He been like that our whole life, you know? So I'm like, man, what, what's up with Snoop's phone? So... My boy Josh called me. He like, yo, bro, Snoop locked up. I'm like, nigga, don't call my phone and say nothing like that. Nigga, what is you talking about? <laughs> nigga, what? Nigga, no, Snoop ain't. Wait, well, now that you say that, Snoop didn't answer the phone. His phone went straight to voicemail. Well, he locked up? Called down to the jail. I'm like, yo, this is back. I don't, I don't know if they can do this or not, but mm -hmm. I called down to the jail, and they told me he was in booking and what he was in booking for. Because I couldn't wow. Google him. I couldn't look him up. He, they, don't, it, they, don't, they don't do it like that. Man, the lady was like, yo, he's being charged. I, I think I said I'm his dad or something. Uh -huh. They're like, yeah, he's being booked on two attempted murders. Uh -huh. That whole day, he not answering the phone. But Lord was with him for him to beat that one. Lord was with him. Lord was with me because I ain't go. Had I went with him, I would have been in jail. You know how many years they were fighting that case? Like three or four years. They finally dropped the charges. I remember a story, me and Mike on the train one day. So, and, you know, Mike, Mike would get me hyped up to do things. You know, he wouldn't try to get me to do nothing. But so we was going to a party in Queens. Now, we live in Brooklyn. We don't drive. So you got to get on the train. So we, we go to Queens. We make it to the party. We kick it. It was at a skating rink. Yeah. But before we go, we both had on some nice leather jackets. And we both had knives. I had took two knives from, uh, from my house. It was like like this. So we got them in our inside pocket on the jack on the on a, in the coat. So, um, you know, we on the train, so we at one end of the car, and it's a bunch of dudes on the other. Now, me and Mike got on these leather coats, we got on jewelry, so um, the dudes keep looking at us. So, Mike said, you know what, man? I think they're gonna try to rob us. He said, let's do this. He said, let's go down there and sit by them and uh, see where they hard at. So I'm thinking, man, that ain't the best idea, I don't think, but you know what? Let's roll. He said, if anything happened, man, Let's just start stabbing them. So I'm like, all right, bet. That sounds like, all right, let's go. So we go down there. Now, mind you, there was no reason for us to go down. We was on our end of the uh, car, and they on their end of the car. But we go down there, and uh, those dudes were so shook that we came down there that nothing happened, man. They, they ended up getting off the train, and, you know, we laughed about it. And we talked about that a couple of years ago, and I was like, man, you know, imagine, though, if something would have popped off. And me and them would have just got to stabbing these dudes. You was hoping nothing popped off the whole time. To be honest, I, I was hoping nothing popped off. Yeah. I was like, man, I, you know, but this my, this my man, and he riding, 
and I'm with him. It's only two of us. It's about, I don't know, eight or nine of them. So I'm like, all right, man, let's go sit by. If you dude. punk out, he dead. If I punk out, they gonna kill him. It's, it's gonna look. It's, yeah, I, I just couldn't do that. I'm, I'm yeah, it, we gonna end up going to prison, and, and I, I'm, I'm so thankful that things worked out for the both of us. Yeah. Because I know if he'd have pulled down and started stabbing, I wouldn't gonna say, ah, oh, man, I ain't. I don't think it's a good idea. You know, if you stabbing, I'm stabbing, and it, it, it would have been terrible, man. It, we probably would have never made it home. You know what I'm saying? We'd have killed those dudes on that train. We probably would never made it home, but. You know, I'm not a, a super religious person, but you know, I pray every day, and I think a lot of a lot of my success. I think I gotta I gotta say I owe to God and I owe to you know my parents raising me the right way because it's been situations, man, where I could have lost my career uh, as a police officer, you know, from from you know different things that happened, and when I was in the military, but God let me retire from both of them. So I think it's because I was a good person. You know, I didn't. I didn't use my uh, position to to violate people, you know, to just put people in jail unnecessarily. If I took somebody to jail, there probably wasn't no other options. You know what I'm saying? That I had to take you. So, um, and you know, when I say I had to take you, sometimes people will make you take them to jail. Mm -hmm. Like you, you trying to give them a break, and they like, nah, f that, and you know, they now they want to come with all the name, call you old Uncle Tom. Okay, now what normally stops all that is when you put some cuffs on a person. Hey, bro, hey, bro, man, I was just playing. No, nah, well, I'm not playing. You know, you was playing, but I'm not. You know, and then sometimes you got to end up taking a person down there. But I was always the type to try to talk. And I, I've seen, you know, I worked with G when we both was in Chester. And I've seen G. G's the same way like I was. I never got the opportunity to work with Jordan on the street. But G's the same way. If G could, if G could talk to a person and get him to do the right thing, G ain't taking him. You know what I'm saying? If he got to take you, yeah. But if, if there's a way that he can give you an alternative to not have to take a person to jail because, you know, now, G's never been to jail, but I told him about my situation. And I think that that might have played a, a factor in his decision-making process. But bottom line is, I didn't get off on taking people to jail. That, that wasn't my thing. Like yeah. Some people say, oh, man, I took eight last night. Nah. That's I, lame. If I say I took zero, but I got through the eight people that I had to come in contact with, I'm happy with that. I, I can live with that. You know, my numbers was always low, you know, when I worked the street. I wasn't putting a whole lot of people in jail. You know, I wasn't no... Super cop out there taking, you know, 20 people to jail a month. But I can say I was the type that changed 20 people's lives a month a when fact. I was out there and I talked to them. That's a know? fact. And to me, that was a much better uh, number, you know, or, or stat statistic than taking a whole lot of people to jail. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I can walk around Columbia, you know, even if I ain't got a weapon on me, I still feel confident. Most of the people that know me, Ain't no ill, but even people I took to prison or, or jail, there was no ill feelings against me. Like, man, he ain't had to do that. You know, if I did it, it was probably because I had to. I mean, I, when we went to court, if there was any way I could help that person, I would. You know, so I could say that my, my legacy of being a police officer, I'm, I'm content with it. You know, I'm happy. I'm real happy with it. Yeah, you were so. definitely, 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 you know, a model police officer if I could say. Well thank you man, thank you. Especially for the black community. You know what I mean? You did a lot of great stuff. Especially listen, if anybody out there has come in contact with Walls and you know you've had an experience with him, leave a comment in the section, man. Tell your tell your wall story. You know, tell your story with Walls, man. Put it in the comment section, man, because I'm you touched a lot of people. Well, you touched a lot of people, man. And I and I want to say I appreciate you for and everything you did you, for man. me. You, you gotta think about it. You did when a I lot for me, like man. You, that's me giving back because I was you. You know when I got when I got in my situation. I, although you didn't do anything, when I caught my my case, I had done something wrong. Yeah, I didn't do everything that they said I did, but I had done some wrong things. So, and somebody gave me a break, and that's why I'm here today. Without that break, there wasn't no officer walls. <laughs> yeah, you know it was convict walls, but it definitely wasn't no officer walls. So that's why. Uh, and for those people out there that say you don't like police officers. You know, you got to really think about it. There, there's bad in, in every profession. There's mm -hmm. some, some bad post office workers. There's some bad construction workers. Are there going to be some bad police officers? Of course there will be. But I will say that I think the majority of them do a good job. And I mean, some of them give the ultimate sacrifice, which is giving their life. You know what I'm saying? And that takes them away from their family. And they die for somebody they probably didn't even know. But that's what they signed up for. And just like I said, a criminal got to take everything that comes with it. When you're a police officer, you got to take everything that comes with it. That's true. You know, and that might mean giving your life. I agree. So, I agree, man. You should write a book one day, Walls. I plan to. I plan to. I want to write a book. 
should write a book one day on your experience, man, as a cop. Yeah. You should. From where I came from, I'm not going to say that there wasn't a lot of good that came out of it because you had some good people. But the majority of people that I ran with didn't have a good ending. You know, I'm proud of Mike because Mike went and did 15 years in the feds and came out, started a business, got a job, started a family. He could have let it break him. He could have said, man, I, you know, I got all this time, came out and got smoked out like a lot of people do. But, you know, he did his thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of him and um, I'm glad for the way that I came up. You know, I, I, I lived in the house. Mike, I tell you. I had a whole lot of discipline coming up. You know, my pops, he, he just really didn't play with me. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, he, he, he made me do the right thing. You know, made me stay in school. I wanted to drop out of school, you know, when I was 17. I was like, man, I don't, I don't need school. What I need to know what uh, X equals. I ain't gonna never need nothing like that. But you know what? To make it out in this world, you need education. Now, there's some people that push education. I would tell a person that learning the trade might sometimes be better than having that education because I know some truck drivers that make over a hundred thousand dollars, and I know some people that got degrees that make forty and fifty thousand dollars. You know, being a plumber, being doing HVAC, all of that, you, you can make a good living. Mm -hmm. So, so would you say that you know? Because I, I would say there's some 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 bad areas here in Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, I think out, out out here in the Northeast. Why do you think? that y'all felt the way that y'all felt, the way that y'all was moving back then? What, what, what was the, the driving factor, you think? Was it not enough for y'all to do? No, I just, we just, I just wanted to be cool. Okay. That was it. Okay. You know, I just wanted to be cool. I wanted to be respected. I wanted people to be scared of me. I wanted to be, I wanted to be with the in crowd, for real. That's what it was, you know? I was insecure, you know, okay. back then. I wanted to be cool. I wanted, I, I just wanted respect. Like, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be the cool guy. I wanted to hang with the cool kids. And the cool kids and me were the tough guys, you know. That was it. That was for me. You know, I can't speak for others. You know, but see, I've always been the type of person that when I do something, I do it. So okay. I'm doing a podcast. I'm serious. Okay. I'm in the street. Like if I back then, I was in it. I was really doing it. So everything that came with it, I did it. Like I lived it. You know what I mean? Like for mm -hmm. real, I adapted that mindset and that lifestyle, and I became that. Okay. You know, but a lot of people, I feel like on this side of town. Probably the same thing. Just want to be cool, doing what they see others do. But then you got people that that's really who they are. Like a lot, some people on this side of town that was really who they were. They were really just thugs, you know. And a lot, and sometimes people just act out because of like the environments that they grow up in. Like you know, as I get older, you know, I look at a lot of guys that I knew from that time, like that maybe went to school a little dirty, maybe didn't get new school shoes and new school clothes as much as the right kid. Like those, Kids but they, cruel. Yeah. They gonna let you know that you dirty. Yeah, so just thinking about, <laughs> so just think about the environment that they grew up in, like the way their moms were. They probably grew up getting abused or talked to any kind of way, or they didn't have the best, they probably grew up in a toxic household. So with them growing up in a toxic household, a lot of times they take that out on others. You know, they take that out on the streets. They take that out on their friends. They take that out on the people around them, you know? Yeah, I would say that can go one of two ways. Like, growing up, my parents, like, when I got to high school, my parents, would buy, they bought me clothes, but if I wanted to be fly, I had to go out there and get it. Like, yeah. they was going to buy me some sneakers. You know, Jordans were now, baby. We have Pumas. Pumas were like $32 to get some Adidas for like 45 That don't sound like a lot to y'all, but that was a lot to us back then. But... You know, that, that kind of put a battery in me to go out there and get it. Mm -hmm. You know, because I wanted to be fly to get the girls. You needed Pumas and Adidas. You, mm -hmm. had, you, you had pro kids and all that. Yeah, you could have been, had to, you know, all kind of game, but you, you needed the gear to go with it. Yeah. So, um, me being broke, me and Mike used to wash windows every Saturday. We used to go downtown. We might come back home with $12 a piece between us. And to us, that was good money. Now, personal lab, you can't do nothing with $12. But back then, you know, you could. But, um... I just think the way that I grew up made me the person I am today. Mm. You know, I wasn't, my parents weren't just throwing money at me to go. And I'm, I think that every generation tries to make it better for their kids. Like, so mm -hmm. being that I grew up that way, I didn't want my kids to, to, to be like I was. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I kind of spoiled my kids. You know, I made sure they was, they was fly going to school. They, they had the latest of everything, I think, mm -hmm. going to school. When it was time for them to get a car, I made sure everybody, you know, pretty much had a vehicle. Um... My reason for doing that is I wanted them to want something out of life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, man, you, you spoiling them. And, and the way I was, but I was trying to set the bar high. I wanted them to always want something. 
you know, and want nice stuff. When you get used to having nice stuff, that makes you want to go out there and work, you know. Like, I'm I'm proud of all my kids, but I'm going I'm to I'm highlight Jordan for, for a minute. You know, Jordan could be dead broke, and I can call and say, bro, you need something? Nah, Pops, I'm good, man. I'm, I, I got enough money. But I know Jay. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, he's he's good now, but I would just send him money because I know he's, he's too proud to ask for anything. And I like that about him. You know, if he, if he, he could be dead broke, you'd never know. You know, Jordan had you thinking he got a million dollars in the bank. He could mm -hmm. be dead broke. But, you know, I like his I like his work ethic, and I like the man he's become. All of my kids, you know, all of my daughters and, and both of my sons, you know, they're they, they doing good in life. And um, I attribute part of that to, to my parents because of what they taught me is what I made sure they're still in them. Yeah. And so, like, when I look at you or I look at a, a Fred or any of those guys, I look at them as kind of being my kids too, you know. So mm -hmm. when you might say, "With well, man, Walls, you looked out for me," well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe in, a, in a sense you might you might say that, but that's what I was supposed to do because I was a cop, you know. So if I could make your life better by helping you to get out of a situation because I know you don't really need that on your record, so that later on in life you could be good, that's what I'm supposed to do, you know. That ain't something that's you know like wow, that's nice that Walls did it. That's what you're supposed when you're a cop. You're supposed to make people's life. That you you know the people that you can you're supposed to help make their life better, mm. not worse. You're supposed to make their life better, you know harassing people, talking crazy, disrespecting people, taking away their dignity. That ain't the right way to do things, and that's why sometimes cops end up getting hurt mm -hmm. because they forget what their real uh, mission is. But you know my goal was to try to make somebody's life better. Yeah, you know and you live you you really lived that though. Like a lot of people talk that, but you lived that. You definitely lived that, like for real, for real. It's people call me to this day. Hey, Walls, man, I got a problem. What you think I should do? And, and I, you know, my wife said, man, why they still calling you? You know, you, I've been retired five years now. Well, they call me because they got the confidence that I'm going to give them the right answer. I'm not just going to, you know, tell them, hey, you know, try to sugarcoat them. I'm going to say, listen, like it's people that say, man, hey, Walls, I know I got a warrant. What you think I should do? Go turn yourself in. That, that was, go down there and get it over with. Go down there early in the morning, turn yourself in and get it over with. You know, but the bottom line is I, I think, to be a cop, you got to be a person that wants to make somebody's life better. You know, if you say, well, man, I want to go out there and lock up all the bad guys, you know, that, that that's good too because we need people to lock up guys that are bad. But we also need people that want to go out there and talk to people to help make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, I, I think here in Richland County, for the most part, and in the city of Columbia, uh, I, think, I think they got a lot of great officers, you know. Um, everybody may not think like me, but everybody's not supposed to think like me. You know, they got everybody got to be their own individual person. Um, but I think you got a lot of great officers out there. You know, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And um, if a person wants to change the culture of being a, a, a policing, they should go be a police officer. That's what I will say. You know, if, if I think that being that politics is dirty, I should go be a politician because then I'll be in a position to make to make a change. You know, make some changes. Uh, to the way politics is run. If a person don't like the way that uh, policing is done, it's going to be a cop. Mm. Then you could uh, maybe influence the people around you to do a, do things differently. So that's just the way I feel about it. Yeah. I feel like the system of policing is, is kind of skewed a little bit. You know what I mean? Like everybody ain't going to be able to do what Walls did. You know, everybody True. ain't going to be able to help people the way that you did. Everybody ain't going to be able to be thorough as you were because some people don't, aren't able to stand on their on they morals and principles as much as you were. Like, if you saw, you know, a, a George Floyd situation going now you would have stopped it off rip. You would have stopped it. But a lot of people can't stand on that. A lot of people can't. You know, a lot of people aren't built like that. They want what's right and what's wrong. But then they think like, man... They well, how is it gonna be? What, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna? Am I gonna get fired? You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. You know, people, 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 people feel like that, and I just feel like the whole system of policing is messed up. You know, so to so so to have guys like you, have guys like G, have guys like Jordan, because I know for a fact them guys genuine, oh, yeah. thorough dudes like in the police force. You know, ain't no smut on their name at all. Mm -hmm. Period. Like, can't nobody say nothing bad about about any of them. You know, G. Is city of Columbia, but he can go anywhere in Columbia mm -hmm. and be fine. Oh yeah, you Richland County, you live in Richland County. Mm -hmm. You ain't have to move to Camden or oh, no. Kershaw. Like you live in Richland County, your kids. And then what's so crazy? People respect your kids because of the type of dude that you were. So it's like I done been out with dudes. I'm talking about been out with Jordan multiple times and street dudes. Mm -hmm. Done been like, yo, walls your pops, you good. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need anything, bro. I got you. Like, and that don't no scares us. Just on, on the respect. Yeah, yeah, just off the rip. Like, you need something. Like, I got you. So, but I, don't, I, I really feel like you know, you don't really get too many guys like that. You know, and, and it's just a breath of fresh air to have guys like you, your sons that are thorough dudes right. that don't abuse their authority. Yeah, I and I don't really meet too many. I don't. I don't really meet too many cops like that. I haven't ran across too many. But that I, I have like to say, that. for me that. It is, it's, it's, I, I worked with a lot of great people. Yeah. I, say, I work with some, you know, I know in this culture now, a lot of people are against, I'm not saying you are, but yeah. I'm going to say when I work with Richard County, some great people, uh, G with City of Columbia, I know they got some great people. And what Jordan is at, you know, he he like it out there. And I, I think a lot of times it's what you make it. You know what I'm saying? If, if you did, if you one of them people that go out of your way to harass people and mess with people, yeah, well, you might need to be concerned about your safety. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody is not just going to accept getting degraded or whatever. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. A lot of people ain't. A lot of people ain't just going for that. Like just cause. No. A lot of people ain't going. I for know that. some people out there that ain't. You know, I, I, I've been in situations out there with people, and there's been times that I was wrong, and I might have said something. And somebody say, "Well, you know, you ain't had to say that." And I thought about it. And I'm not too big to tell somebody I'm sorry. I say, "Bro, you're right. I, I, I shouldn't have did that." You know, I'm mm-hmm. sorry about it. You know, but I think that comes with being secure, which a lot of people believe in never back down. You know what I'm saying? I remember I, I stopped the car one day. It was like uh, three dudes in it. And uh, it was on 277. I was by myself. And I had came home and went to the bathroom and left my gun at home. So when I got out, you know, the car and I patted my side, I said, I ain't even got no gun. I'm dealing with these three dudes. So I said, you know what, man? Y'all just go ahead. And it was like, but what you stopped me for? And I told him right quick, I said, but y'all go ahead. And you know, they went and I called G. I was like, man, get my gun out the bathroom and bring it to me right quick. And he bought me my gun and, and everything was good. But um, I know some guys that they, they if they had stopped the car and they realized they didn't have the gun, they still probably would have kept on going because they just felt like, you know, I came back down. Me, I could back down. I, I ain't I ain't too uh too proud to to get out of a bad situation and say, you know, I'm gonna live to, to come back another day. I ain't gotta stop that car today. I'll see him another day if it's if it's meant to be, but you know, you just gotta be secure in yourself. A lot of you dudes about. ain't secure in yourself. You know? If you're watching this and you feel a certain type of way about that comment that I said, then it applies to you. If you're a cop and you're the police, a lot of you dudes ain't secure in who you are. I'm very secure. A lot of y'all. <laughs> a lot of y'all. Most of y'all. But I'm gonna say this, Shaq. You know, being a cop, can it be scary? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure people gonna, gonna write comments and say, well, you shouldn't have been a cop. But I mean, it, you're a human at the end of the day. Yeah, you walk up to a car at night when you just stop the car. And yeah, dudes in it, and it's just you, and ain't nobody else. Around. And all you got is a pistol. Yeah, I don't even have a chopper in the car. You know, so it takes a lot, a lot of intestinal fortitude to walk up to that vehicle and, and do what you got to do, man. So you never uh, know. Yeah. So anybody that sitting on like I tell you, it's a hard job. It is. It's a hard job, and like I say, when you're a cop, you got to take everything that come with it. You signed up to put yourself in harm's way, so that's what you got to go do. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to go do. I, I did it, lived through it. There's cops that did it and died. You know, um, I wasn't no better than them, just that the Lord looked out for me, you know. And like I said, I think I was a genuinely good person. Mm-hmm. I that agree. Goes along. Karma, karma's something, boy. Karma, karma is real, man. I've learned that in life. Now, now you ain't got nothing to do with being a cop. Karma's real. Karma come back to get you. You out here and you a dirty person doing people wrong. Karma come back and get you. That's a fact. You know, and you got to be be prepared when it come back around. When you when you giving it out, it's all good. But like they say, when the rabbit got the gun, it ain't you know, no fun. Whole, it ain't no fun then. It ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, baby. Yeah. It ain't no fun. Walls, man. Thank you, man. All right, Shaq. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. I, I enjoyed this, man. You know, yeah, and, and cool. I'm sure this is gonna be a treat for the people that know you. Right, the people, right. the people that know you, it's gonna be a treat for them, man. They'll be like, man, walls, man. You know, <laughs> like I said, man. Y'all put y'all wall stories in the comments, man. For real, <laughs> put your wall stories in the comments, man. Tell the people, man, where they can find you at, man. You know, don't hit him up with your legal advice. You know, asking for legal advice, man, because he 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 not a lawyer now. You know no, what I'm, I'm saying? Not a lawyer. I'm just a, oh, walls, diary. you did you did used to give people game though. Like you you might get. Three to five. You used to get <laughs> you look you used to yeah. give people that type of game back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, you I still tell them today. Listen, man, you, I wouldn't do that if I was you, but if you do that, 
it's what you gonna be facing. Yeah. If you cool with it, all right. Yeah. You know, go for it. Yeah. I put some money on your books. You know, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't go do it though. Yeah. But hey, they can find me there. You know, I'm on Facebook. All they gotta do is look up Gerard Walls on Facebook, and I'm on Instagram. Same thing. Yeah. Same name. G e r a r d Walls. Hit him up, man. It's funny. I don't even tell people my name's Gerard. People say, "Man, what's your name, man?" Walls. You know, because in the army, you use your last name as a cop. You know, if I met somebody and told them Gerard, I would just feel strange. Like, man, I don't ever tell nobody my name's Gerard. Yeah. You know, when I order food, they're like, oh, you know, uh, what's the name, boy? Walls. My wife said, you say that like like that means something. I ain't doing Walls. I mean, to me, I'm, I'm proud of my name. That name whole weight. Yeah, I'm proud of that. That name whole weight and respect. <laughs> For sure. My pops used to say that the same way, Walls. I used to be like, yeah, I'm a, when I get old, I'm going to say it just like that. Because everything he did, I wanted to do. He was a cop. I like, I want to be a cop when I get old. Anything he did... And I think I'm glad my sons feel the same way with me. I, I think that's a sign. I'm not saying that your, your, your child got to follow in your footsteps, mm-hmm. but I just think that that's a sign that you know they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Mm-hmm. So I mean, with them wanting to kind of imitate what I did, I, that that made me feel good. You know, when they both went into the that line of work, uh, even no matter what they would have did, I'd have been proud of them. But going to that, that it really made me feel good. So I'd imagine it should though, because yeah. you know. Shoot, you know that that's not a bad field to go down. You know, it's not. It's not. And seeing you do good make me feel good. So you think about, it. imagine had I helped you and you just turned out to be just a terror in the streets. You out there, I'm like, man, I should have let him take Shaq that night when they was at the basketball game. But seeing you do good makes me say, you know what? That was a good call, man. That was mm-hmm. a good call. You made sure he was good. His record stayed clean. He can go do whatever it is he need to do. That's what being a cop is all about. Not the arrest that you made. But like I said again, the lives that you change, that's what uh, being a cop is about for me. That's love. You know, so thank you. Thank you, all. I got some Hennessy, so when we cut this camera off, we get this Hennessy, man, and <laughs> we get a shot in. Yes, sir. <laughs>